when it comes to fishing for carp and F1s in shallow water, the biggest thing that I've learned is you need the food element to your ground bait. The fine particle alone is not enough to hold them. the food element in the past it's always been a case of adding two mil micro pellets to your ground bait. The downside of this is you've got very uniform particles, one being your ground bait, very small size, and then your micro pellets, completely uniform, they're all exact, but there's nothing in between. I wanted a ground bait which was a complete mishmash of shapes, sizes, different textures, right from the finest particle all the way up to the bigger food element, and that that's why coarse carb was invented. Before we mix our ground bait, I want to talk you through two of the ground baits in the Blakes range. So one being Coarse Expander and the other one being Pole Mix. Now these mixes were designed to take on a lot of water because they're specifically for the pole. So when you mix those ground baits, you want to add a lot of water to them. They're heavily based on Expander, so they're going to take that water almost look at your ground bait like a sponge. It's got a limited amount of water before it has stopped taking it and almost go into a slop. Now, when you're fishing the pole, having a ground bait that doesn't bind, so you can add a lot of water to it, when you put it in your pole mounted pot a lot of the time with your holes in it, you can turn your pot over, dip it in the water, it release out and go straight to the bottom. That's what those mixes were designed for. So the way you mix them is completely different than this. So with this, I like the pole type mixes, you do not want your pole mixes to bind. Because we're fishing a method feeder today, that's the most important thing. So if I add too much water at the start, I'm losing all of that binding quality. And I wanted to speak about that before we go about mixing it. And that's why I'm gonna mix this totally different than when you mix your pole mixes. With your pole mixes, you can add a load of water at the start and almost the more water, the better. And then you can just push it through your riddle and it's absolutely perfect. When I mix this, I want it as dry as possible. So literally, completely the opposite of your pole mix. So just bear that in mind when we're mixing this. So talking through mixing our ground bait, it's nice and simple. And again, it's always better to be drier because I want to mix this to the dry side so that way when I'm fishing every time again thinking about our ground bait like a sponge every time I add a little bit of water and dampen the mix down it almost it goes really sticky again and then it goes really sticky which is perfect for maybe 15 20 minutes and then the air gets to it the sunlight gets to it dries it out so again I dip my fingers in my water sticky the mix up again just by dampening it up and it's going to give me lots of opportunities to be able to bind it and then it dries out bind it and it dries out and it, it keep doing that but by that time i would have used all that mix whereas if i had too much water at the start for however many times i can bind it i'm cutting them down so with my ground bait get a kilo bag empty it in I'll just pop that under there so it doesn't blow away. So to start with, before I mix it, if this is the first time you've ever used coarse carp or coarse expander, you'll notice when you look at it, it's like, whoa, that's completely different than any other ground bait I've ever seen. So what I'm going to do is just grab a bit of it and put it in my hands like so. And you'll be able to see in there, you've got a right mishmash of different shapes, different particle sizes. You've got some fine particles and then also some massive particles. And that's exactly how you want it. So with my water, got a tub of water. We're doing no measurements here because the least amount I can use, the better. So literally a tiny dribble to start with. Just lift my sleeve up, stir it around and it will almost sound like you're mixing up gravel. So that 
when I look at it, just to get again to give you a rough idea, it's taking a bit of water, but when I go to bind it, it's not had enough water yet. But you're always better doing little bits at a time with this mix. So again, a little bit more water, not a lot. And just again, stir it around in my bucket. You'll be able to see now it's starting to come together a little bit. It's darkening down. But again, when I squeeze it, it's just made a ball. But it's breaking up a bit too quick. So a tiny little bit more water. Again, not a lot, just a little dribble. Again, stir it around. The nice thing with this mix, because it's so coarse, you don't need a riddle for it. So again, just stir it around. Just rub it in the bucket. And now, when I bind it, you'll be able to see it's actually binding like a, like a ball. You know, it's really sticking together. Now for me, and I've got to rub it in between my fingers like so, when I get it to that consistency, that is absolutely perfect. Now, in literally five, ten minutes, that's going to have almost lost that binding quality that I'm talking about. It's like a gentle squeeze, but you'll be able to see I've really got to sort of push it to make it come apart. That's what I want when I'm fishing. I want to be able to put it on my feeder, it binds really, really nicely. And then what I was saying before, when the air gets to it, when the sunlight gets to it, it's going to dry it out. So when that's in my um, bait box on my side tray, I'll have a little tub of water like so, and I can, if I just move the bag out of the way, literally dip my fingers, run it in the mix again, and it rebinds. And that's what we want. We want it so that we're making the fish actually have to eat out of the feeder. We don't want a mix that hits the bottom and just goes, because as soon as it's opened up, as soon as the fish comes in and moves it, your tip's going to be sat there, never know one's it out of the feeder. It's come over the feeder and you've got, you know, no pile left. Whereas when you mix it and it actually binds, when the fish comes over and sort of eats out of it, it's really got to work to get your hook bait. And I just find mixing it this way, you get a lot more bite. So nice and simple, that's how you mix coarse carp. Why pick a method feeder over a pellet feeder or a hybrid to chuck across today? Well, the biggest reason, to be honest, is when I'm looking at me inside edge. So we've all fished for carp and F1s down the edge with a pole and you feed many different types of baits and they don't come in. Yet as soon as you feed some ground bait, they're in your peg. Personally, I think a method feeder lends itself better to when you want to start feeding ground bait. I think a pellet feeder is brilliant when you just want to feed neat micro pellets. A hybrid feeder, again, exactly the same reason. But I think personally, when you're fishing in shallow water, so real shallow water in your margins, I think a method feeder outfishes them all, to be honest. I've tried multiple venues and I've always had more success fishing with a method feeder. Now, whether the fact that it lies better on the bottom, so when, you know, it's real shallow, the fish come in and they can see all the bait opened up, whether it works better for that reason, whether it works better because you can put a bit more bait on it than maybe a pellet feeder and a hybrid feeder. Maybe it's a bit better because the ball lands and it's exposed rather than a pellet feeder. I don't know, but one thing I am sure of is when you're fishing with ground bait, it just works so much better on a method feeder. And that's why I picked a method feeder over a pellet or a hybrid feeder. When fishing across to an island, your line clip is your best friend. That is your full stop. And because we're spending our day doing it, it makes sense to take some time and clip up correctly. So give you a few little tips when clipping up. So set my rod up, my rods, importantly, it's got no hook length attached to it. Make sure if you store your rod and it's got a hook length, take your hook length off. Last thing you wanna do is hook the island and lose the lot before you've even started. So for that reason alone, what I said, 
the last thing that I want to do is hook the island. So my feeder at the start, 20 gram, um, sorry, this is a 30 gram, but if you use a 20 or 30, the weight's irrelevant. But remember, when you're clipping up your feeder, it's not got your bait on it. So I always want to clip up just sure, and then when the match starts or your pleasure session starts, have two or three chucks, just getting your eye in. You don't want to try and go too close too soon. The last thing you want to do is load your feeder up all in. You've clipped up with an empty feeder just so it's grazed in the island. The all in goes, or your first cast on your pleasure session, you load your feeder up, it weighs more now. So it's going to have a bit more stretch in your line. First chuck, and you chuck it straight into the island, and then you've just lost all confidence. So when I clip up, I'm going to work my way towards the island, but I'm going to de deliberately stop a little bit short. And then when I start fishing, I can fine tune it in the first sort of three or four chucks. So the first cast, I want to cast towards it, but I need to get my iron. It's my first cast. So I just line up with my little mud bank that I'm aiming at and just try and aim maybe two thirds, four fifths the way across to start with. And then I can see where it's landed. I've probably got two more rod lengths to go. But what I'm going to do is pull a bit of line off. So I've got roughly a rod length. I'm going to put it underneath my line clip. And then I'm going to lift up, make sure before I wind in that my line's slack to my rod tip. So I don't wind and break my quiver tip. And then wind in. And now I've got my full stop. Now I've got, you know, my line clipped up. So I can't hit the island. So this chuck... It's gonna go a little bit closer, and then again, I can fine tune it after this chuck. So looking at it there, I'm probably, I don't know, maybe six feet short. So unclip it, take about four foot off, because again, my eyes can be a bit dodgy. Again, before you wind in, just give your line a bit of a pull to make sure that it's not tangled, especially when you're taking slack out. And now, I can start making me minute adjustments. So chuck out, again, it's landed a little bit short, unclip it. There's no prizes for chucking out and hitting the island straight away and, and clipping up. You know, you don't get any extra marks, you don't catch any more fish if you've had one chuck out to get your line clip or three or four. So it just makes sense to take your time. It's gradually going towards it now bit more of a harder cast looking at it I'm probably still a meter off but again remembering I've got that empty feeder it's not loaded so ideally I'd like to be maybe if 18 inches from the island roughly for my first actual proper cast so chuck out that one went a bit to the right so again I'm just going to take a one turn off Reclip it up and now concentrate on my cast, make sure that I'm dead in line with where I want to fish. And every time my feeder lands, especially when I'm fishing to an island, I'm trying to feel the drop. So when I hit my clip, I almost want the feeder to land and get a bit of time. You might only get half a second, but it lands and then it's on the bottom. Not it lands and there's no drop whatsoever, you know, i.e. the feeder sink into the bottom. So this one, right in line with my marker. And I just had, I just felt that millisecond and then it dropped. Again, looking at that one, I know with my loaded feeder, I can probably take two bits of line off and then I'll have one more chuck just to make sure. And then I feel like we're good to go. So again, line up with my marker, nice positive chuck, hit my clip, and there I'm probably still 10, 12 inches off. So I know that my first chuck, when it's all loaded up, I'm not going to hit the island, and then I'm ready to fish. So I'm going to do it once more, and then the last thing that I want to... My last chuck is almost always like my practice in terms of that feeder's actually loaded now. So I'm gonna chuck out, I'm gonna hit my clip, and then I'm gonna go through sinking my line. So I hold my line to sink it, because sometimes you get bites as you're sinking the line. And then again, 
it's all personal but I like with the angle that I'm at instead of actually using a rear rest like you might do in open water how I have my rod rest because I'm only a little twister I can put my rod rest there so my eyes stuck in can't drag my rod out of it but I like having it actually on my seat so I've got a slight angle between my rod tip and my feeder and it all depends on how you cast so the way that I cast out chuck out keep it quite straight to be honest chuck out hit the clip and then hold the line sink it and by the time I've sunk my line I'm not going to have a lot of slack in my rig so then I can bring it back and I haven't got to move very far to be able to put it on my rod rest whereas if you have it at that sort of angle depending on how you cast because again your line stop is your full stop can't go any further than that so the last thing that I want to do is chuck out hit the clip nicely and then move my rod which drags my feeder away from where it's landed so I'm not going to actually use the butt rest today so pretend fishing now so chuck out nice chuck hit my clip like so land, didn't land the best but put me hold me line so now I can feel my line sinking because I use quite heavy line if the wind's blowing and um, making a bow in the line I just lean forward a bit so again I'm making sure this is why I like sinking the line this way because I know that there's no unnecessary um, me pulling to be able to you know sink my line but as I'm doing it I know that my feeder hasn't moved whereas if you chuck out and move your rod you could feeder could move or if you chuck out and sort of just dunk your rod tip under the water you could move it from where it's landed likewise you don't want to be striking to sink the line because that could move it as well it's all about just like our pole fishing we set our little trap with our pot put our float right on top of it we don't put our float in and then feed our bait you know a foot away so on my last cast of clipping up i always go through that practice like i would be when i was fishing so chuck out hit the clip go through sinking my line now if i want to where i've sunk my line to here what i want to do is i want to move my rod rest literally probably that much further forward so that my rod eye is this side of my rod rest so again i can just lift my rod rest up i can put that down on my keep net if i just move my rod rest ever so slightly forward so not much probably an inch so I'll just move it here because it doesn't seem to want to stretch so move it an inch that way get my rod rest in the right position and now my rod eye is this side of my rod rest which is exactly where I want it personally when I'm fishing I like to have my rod tip just a little bit under the water and I'll explain the reason why as well so I just lift it up and put my top eye just a little bit under the water at certain times of the year especially a place like here at Packington you've got a million and one trees and in the summer months you can get a lot of white fluff on the water and what I don't want to do, especially if you're using real fine quiver tips, is get any of that stuff on my line because that's just going to give you a better chance of actually breaking your rod tip. So I'm all set now, ready to start fishing. Um, literally first chuck after probably three and a half minutes caught a little carp probably four or five pound then we've had another five or six chucks I did catch one little tiny fish but this is our first better fish again that we've hooked and early on when you start in 
all you're really trying to work out is one, where do you need to cast in relation to the island? And also, how long are your bites taking? So our first bite probably took four and a bit minutes, just before I was about to wind it in. I had a little bite, picked it up and caught one. And then our second fish was only a, literally a little small fish. And it had probably been out there a minute and 30 seconds. And the tips just sort of rattled off, um, picked up and little small fish, only a little skimmer. And then this one, bite time, probably took about, again, about three and a half minutes. So what I'm trying to work out is really you, how often do I need to be casting? And also, where do I want to be casting? Now, our first fish was a carp. And I don't know if this is a carp or a big F1. There's some massive, yeah, that is a massive F1. I was about to say there's some huge F1s in this lake. And when you're fishing to an island, again, trying to relate everything into your pole fishing. If it's more carp, again, depending on how deep it is, I don't know how deep it is across, but as a general rule, you'll tend to find that you'll catch the bigger carp in the shallower water, whereas the smaller F1s, they tend to be in the deeper water. So that is a massive F1. That's probably the biggest F1 I've ever hooked, to be honest. Um, I genuinely thought that was going to be a car. I'll see if I can hold it up for us. That is absolutely massive. I don't know if I'll be able to hold him up. He's, uh, I think he might be a bit big for me. But that is an absolute unit. I'll see, I'll try, if if he don't, you know, this fish is, pro, you know, so old, that is a massive F1, <laughs> absolute unit, so I'll pop him in, I'll keep, again, look after them, you know, when they're, when they're like that, that is massive, um, so yeah, early on, starting, I've moved my line clip probably that far from when we first clipped up. And to start with, I always like starting off on maggots, even if you're catching an odd one of these, because when I chuck out, any sign on my rod tip is suggesting to me something's eating out of my feeder and I want to wind in and chuck back out. So at the moment, where we're up to, I'm thinking four minutes maximum. And the fact that I've caught, you know, a carp smaller than that F1 and that big F1 is telling me that I'm happy where I am at the moment. And this just the case is just to start with, you need regular casting, sort of build the peg up and go from there. So I'm sticking to three red maggots all hook through the fin end. I might change my hook bait if small fish become a problem, but I love dead maggots, I think they're so soft, especially when you're fishing with ground bait, they tend to work really, really well. So, just load my feeder up, probably halfway in my mould of ground bait, and then I lay my hook bait, and then just tuck your thumb so that your hook length's coming out nicely at the bottom. And take your time when you're doing this, always give it a nice squeeze. And then my little routine, before I cast out, I always set myself. So I want to make every cast count. So hold my feeder when I'm ready, and then release, and then go through my casting. So, let's see if we can get it right in the little spot again. So, it's absolutely lovely. So again, just lean forward once it's landed. Take my time to sink the line. It's always worth holding the line. When it's good, at times, they're on that feeder literally within seconds. So by holding the line, just put my rod tip, my rod here. Just get them on me on my rod rest. So to there. But what I was going to say is at times they're on that bait so quick, chuck out, you hold your line, it's a, a sensation you know when you get one, it'll pull real sharp. And if you feel it tug at you, lift up, you ain't got to strike really hard, but just lift up and quite often they'll be on. So carry on. I'm 
made up of catching that F1 to be honest um, carry on plodding along and hopefully when we started casting a bit more regular we start getting a few more signs and then that might bring our you know our bite time a little bit closer i we're not waiting as long for bite so i might start casting maybe every two and a half three minutes depending on how quickly i'm getting the bites so i've just had a little indication where my lines drop back so something might have bumped into the line but i give it 30 seconds if i don't get one i know my feet just moved i wind it chuck it back out but it's a great start we keep pulling along the setup dead simple little things that i found make a big big difference so i want to talk you through them so starting off with my rod choice again this is completely personal to me you might find something better but i want to talk you through what i use i personally opt for a 10 foot aventus rod it's a, made by guru i like this rod because it's what i call a proper casting rod it's actually got some meat in it i don't particularly like two soft rods so nice good 10 foot rod moving down to real line again no messing around eight pound personally i think 10 pounds a little bit too heavy six pounds a little bit too light eight pounds lovely because it's so durable but it's still nice to be able to cast off and then moving down to my feeder i've got one feeder one size one weight that's all i use so it doesn't matter where I'm chucking. Even if it was only 16, 17 meters, I'd always opt for a 30 gram feeder. And this is a small guru, 30 gram method. The reason I don't like 20 grams, to be honest, is because I catch so many fish when I'm holding the line. And it's so important that when your feeder lands, that it's not sliding around. A lot of the time, you don't know what type of bottom you're fishing on. Some can be quite steep, some can be quite flat. and I've always found, again, I just, I've just i tried a 20 gram one and I always go back to a 30 gram one. So a small guru, 30 gram. What is really important is using the longest stem in it. That just makes your casting so much more accurate. And then again, moving further down from my method, you'll be able to see I've got a little speed bead on there. Again, all personal choice. Some people absolutely love elastic. Me, I personally, I'm a free running person. I like it completely free running. Again, for that reason, I catch so many fish whilst I'm holding the line and you just feel it pull and you pick up. They're on the bait so quick at times. That's why I set it up this way, completely free running. So when my feeder lands and it grabs my hook bait, as soon as it moves, I'm gonna feel that on the line. And when you're catching them big wily carp at times, you'd be amazed that you chuck out, hit the clip, put the rod down, and literally as soon as you grab the line, you can feel it pull. That's how quick they're on the bait. So for that reason alone, I just feel this is the optimum way of being able to catch them. Hook length and hook. I use 018 hook length. Changing the length of the hook length makes a big difference. Some venues, you've got to use a four inch hook length. But I would say three, three and a half inch hook length is what I find optimum. Again, I only ever use 018 hook length and hook wise, because we're just gonna be fishing with maggots, again, one hook, a 14 spade end Kaizen. And that is my setup. Like I say, I've been to so many different venues. I've tried loads of different types of feeder, size of feeder, and this setup is just the best I've found it. Completely free running. And trust me, if you stick to that, you won't go a million mile wrong. If and when your peg ever starts fading, I want to show you a great little way of getting some fish back in your peg. So normally what you find in your match or your session is once you've started or when you start, it's all sort of brand new and you get a little instant hit of some fish. They sort of come in milling around for it, go down and they're quite easy to catch. And then depending on the day, some days, don't get me wrong, you can have red letter days, keep casting out and it just gets slowly better and better and better. 
but I'd say more often than not, you get your little run of fish to start with, especially when it's calf, and then you're chucking out, and it's not really happening. So I try and relate it to my pole fishing. So just like when you're fishing down the edge, so if we sat this side, we're chucking over there. If we were sat over there, we'd be chucking over here. So it's the same thing. This margin and that margin are basically the same. So when you relate it into your pole fishing, whatever pole mounted pot you fish, even your biggest sort of pace versions, you can feed that in the edge and nothing really happens. And you think, do you know what? I'm gonna feed sort of two, 300 milligram bait and then I go on another line. And we've all done this, I've done it, I've had it happen a million times, where you fill your big pot with ground bait, you feed it down the edge, you put your cupping kit down, you pick up whatever else you was gonna do, pick it up, you bait up and you look down and there's a carp tailing right where you fed that bait. It's volumes of bait to get the fish in the peg. Now, to be able to do that on my far margin, I don't know how many meters away it is, but it's a lot further than all my poles. So shipping out there and sort of potting it, that's out of the question, I can't do that. So the only way that I can do it is with an actual bait up feeder. So this one here is a 20 gram bait up feeder. Talking about this, even though this is only 20 grams, once it's filled up, it actually weighs quite a bit. So for your normal fishing rod, my rods are the same, but for your normal fishing rod, you might use you know, a nice little light soft rod fishing a 20 gram, 30 gram, even sort of a 40 gram loaded little method feeder that's more than strong enough but when you're actually going to be casting one of these out you need a good rod more importantly you need a strong rod now this the rod that i use is a 10 foot of Venus. it's a proper casting rod i know these are very expensive but you can get a cheaper sort of 10 foot rod it ain't got to be nothing special because all you're going to be doing is using strong line on it so eight pound line straight through got a little snap link swivel tied in a loop even though I'm not going to change this feeder I like using a snap link swivel because it always goes to the point at the top of the um, feeder so that just aids when you're casting it out it always wants to go to the you know basically the middle of the feeder and that makes it a lot easier with your accuracy so before we actually cast that feeder out what I want to show you is the difference in terms of volumes of bait because I'm sure a few of you might be thinking well if you can have a few chucks with you know a bait up feeder why don't you just use a bigger method feeder I don't think it works like that I think the reason this works is because you have two or three quick chucks you make a bit of noise you know you're striking the bait out so you've got the, the attraction noise that the feeder landing striking out so you're creating a bit of cloud in your peg and it's it's like an instant hit of a bit of noise and fish especially carp they're so inquisitive they hear something they think oh what's going on there so that's our bait up feeder so picking up our actual fishing feeder what i want to show you is the difference in terms of volumes of bait so stick that underneath my bum actually i don't need this all i need to do is show you the mold because that's what is you know, measuring out our volume of bait as such. So I'll pop our feeder rod down. So with our you know, um, coarse carp, with me method, obviously I'm gonna load it up, I'm gonna compress it down, so maybe a little bit more than that. That is our total bait. So if I pop that out, pop that in this hand. So with that feeder's worth of bait, when I squash it down, when you actually break it down, there's a, you know, a, basically a dusting, and I've only got little tiny puds, I've only got little tiny hands. It's not really a massive amount of bait, but it's the perfect amount of bait to be able to chuck out in a little parcel, got a little blob of bait, fish eating, turns onto the bait, it's enough to attract that fish to that pile, hopefully eat most of the bait, eat our hook bait, and it's fish on. So when you look at sort of that amount of bait, it's not a lot. Now what I'm gonna, I'm gonna try my best to do this. I'm gonna try and put that on my leg and show you the difference now with how much bait this holds. 
So again, you can liken it to that's your small kinder pots worth of bait, and this is going to be my big pots worth of bait. So what I'll be doing is loading it up, not compressing it in the middle, and I'll talk about that in a minute. So sort of overloading it, and then I'll be compressing it once. So it'll probably be a little bit more bait than that. That's roughly the amount of bait. Now, I'm just gonna get that out of my hand. We've got a massive herd of Canadian geese flying over. So once I sort of rub this out in my hand, it is a bit compressed and I'm spilling a fair bit of it. But I would say, when I'm looking at it, it's got to be sort of four of my little method feeders worth of bait. So by having two or three chucks with me bait up feeder, say if you, we said it's four methods worth of bait, if I have three chucks, 12 method feeders in a really, really little quick hit. So get our bait, I'll chuck that back in our bait box. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk you through using your bait up feeder so i'm only using a 10 foot rod where i'm casting from a sitting position when i'm casting my method feeder out it's absolutely fine but when i'm using my bait up feeder i like to stand up because rather than using a really long rod that's awkward by standing up it's giving me it just makes being able to cast out a lot easier so when it comes to filling our feeder up as well What's important with this and what I don't want to be doing is filling my feeder up and compressing, so squeezing it now, like so, giving it a good squeeze and thinking, oh, I've got some more room to be able to get some more bait in that, then squeezing it and squeezing it again. Because what that's going to do is my bait's under sort of two or three different compressions. So when it comes to sort of trying to strike my bait out, it's not, I'm going to struggle to get it out of the feeder. So you can see I'm going to struggle to get it out of the feeder with my thumb. So I always give the bait, you know, turn around with my hand, try and make it nice and loose. And then when I'm filling it, I try and sort of load it up with both my thumb and my finger, like so, with my thumb and my finger, and just gently sort of put my bait in. And then once it's there, then give it one compression and then go through my casting. So I'm gonna put that down, stand up and go through with our bait up feeder. So again, get yourself nice and um, composed, nice and comfortable. And it's just a nice gentle lob to be able to get to my distance. So let it hit the water. Now this next part is really important. Instead of picking the rod up and striking really hard and then winding down and striking really hard again you're going to be spreading the bait you know out if you do that so by holding the rod obviously with my arm on it picking it up and trying to violently shake the feeder without moving it too much so lift up like so give it a few flicks and you'll feel it it'll, it'll go really really light you'll get there and it'll be like oh that's that's come out nice and easy. Then you know your feeder's empty. So that's one. And I just have three chucks going quite quickly together because it's that bit of noise, you know. Noise is one of your biggest advantages when, when you're fishing for carp and F1s. That little quick hit of noise, that little quick hit of bait so again, let it land, give it a few seconds, and violently shake your rod. See there, my feed has come straight to the surface, and then just gently wind it in. One tip I'd give you when you're doing this is don't rush. You know, take your time. It's, it feels a big weight on the end of your rod, so it's important that when you go through your motion, it's just nice and slowly. So nice, slowly behind me. Nice, gentle lob out. Let it hit the clip. Again, a few seconds. Violent shake with my arm. And there, my feet just come straight to the surface and wind in. So I'm going to put that rod down. So 
Before we do anything else, I want to touch on what I said about big potting in the edge with ground bait. So you might think, well, I've fed some bait over there. I'll leave it alone for a couple of minutes and then I'll have a chuck on it. So just what I was talking about when, how many times it happened, big pot of ground bait, feed it in the edge, put your top kit down and they're tailing up on it immediately. When this is right, when you chuck out the amount of times that you could have been fishing for a little bit, getting an odd bite, not really going anywhere, you do that and you think, the first time you do it as well, it's a bit like, I've just set a few hand grenades off in my peg. That's what it sounds like. And you get the odd look like that. What's, what's the ball up to over there? And then you think, oh, I'm not too sure about this. You chuck it out, put the rod down, and it's like literally dragging it out of your hand. There's on the bait straight away. So when you do this, one of your best casts is your following cast straight after baiting up. So I'm going to pick that rod up and get it chucked in. So that one come as I was sinking the line. So I've had me chucks with my bait up feeder and sort of two and a half minutes into my cast, I definitely had a bite and I missed it. It swum towards me. So I had a little stab on my feeder thinking, oh, it's a little fish. And I've looked up, there's a big bow wave out of my peg. And then I've gone to cast out and it was going completely wayward to the left so I just stopped it in mid-flight we all have bad casts I'd like to say I don't cast that bad but we all have bad casts so it's again come back set yourself and then I've literally chucked out as I was holding the line exactly what I said one's pulled it so the biggest thing about this is it giving me confidence that I've done the right thing with that bait up feeder more often than not, it works so well, it's just doing it at the right time of your match or your session. So the first two hours, I would almost fish um, just with my feeder, and then the latter part of the match, or the latter part of the day, that's when it really starts to, really starts to work. Again, just thinking about it into your pole fishing, you wouldn't, at the start of the match, you know, well, some places you can big pot in the edge and they're on it straight away. But as a rule, it tends to work better the latter the part of the day with your session or the latter the part of your match. So hopefully we get this one in and then I'll be thinking to myself, I have, you know, one or two more chucks with my method feeder see what happens if i don't get a bite then i'll probably have three casts again because that seemed to work quite well i'll have three chucks with me with my bait up feeder but what's amazing is before i had a you know before we got our bait up feeder rod out i probably had five or six casts and it never looked like i was ever going to get a bite no signs and yet, as soon as you do that, it's a nice car. I've missed a bite and had one pull me line straight away. That's the difference. Again, the carp are used to it in the edge. They've seen it a million times before, you know. We're all used to big potting ground bait in the edge. Oops. Um, that was me rushing. I thought he was just going to pop up then. They're used to it in, you know, in the edge. They've seen big volumes of bait in the edge quite regularly, but there's not many people that do it when you're fishing across the island. So I remember the first time I'd done it, I got some right funny looks. And you get even better looks when you're playing one about five minutes later. <laughs> but it's one of them things that could be absolutely deadly. And these are the fish that oh, uh, it's a 
big, big fish. So just make sure there's a little bit of a bend in my rod, not too much, a little bit of a bend. So that way it's not gonna get wrapped up, especially when they're big fish, you're gonna need both hands. Make sure you cradle him, you know, he's not flipping around on your foot plate. So my hook's actually just popped out. He's definitely in the mouth. So again, just hook him up. He's a big fish. That is a lovely fish. So it's a great sign, to be honest, to have a, a fish that quick. had a couple of chucks, never had a bite, picked our bait up feeder rod out, three chucks, second chuck on it, and I've had a bite that's pulled the line straight away. So it's working a tree. I hope you've enjoyed the few little tips that I've given you today. Make sure you get out there and give it a go. Stick to, you know, this size method when you're fishing. Don't be frightened of putting that bait up feeder on. And lastly, I hope you enjoy using coarse carp. It's a mix that took us a bit of time to get right, but these definitely seem to um, enjoy it. I will not, not be having a few more carps, but until the next time, um, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll catch you on the bank soon. Cheers for watching.